Hi guys, it's Lisa Howell here from Perfect Form Physio and the Ballet Blog, and I'm here with Kat today to go over one exercise that we use a lot in clinic. Um, this is an exercise that's really good for helping to mobilize your low back and also wake up all of those tiny, deep little stabilizing muscles. This is super important for anyone who's had back pain, anyone who's had abdominal surgery, anyone who's had a pregnancy, uh, anyone who struggles with mobility of the low back or having a very flexible lower back. Finding all of those deep baby stabilizing muscles can really help to get this whole area working normally. A lot of people are under the impression that to get good core control they have to lock everything off. This is very far from the truth and all the recent research indicates that we actually need dynamic spinal control rather than just locking it together. So this exercise um, has a few different stages. So make sure you listen to all the instructions and go through each stage. First, we're going to do an assessment, then a correction if needed, and then slowly progress through the whole sequence. So Kat, this, just lying down nicely on the ground, you want to make sure you have no pain or discomfort. Some people might find that they need to do some stretches or mobilizers through their hips if you've got any current back pain before you do this exercise. Then first, we're just going to do a little tuck and a tilt. So she's just going to roll her pelvis back and then come forward. Now you will have probably done a version of this in Pilates class or a yoga class, but I want you to take note of a few different things. We want to use as little muscle as possible to do this. So when Kat goes back into a little bit of a tuck, she's very soft through the abdomen. Can you just grip up a little bit harder? Yeah, a lot of people will do too much in the beginning. So let it soften and actually use your own fingers to check your abdominals as you do this. We want to use as little muscle as possible to achieve the movement. You're still using muscles, but you're using the very, very deep ones. So just oscillating forward and back. When we go into a little bit of an arch, I'm just checking to make sure that the back muscles are really nice and soft. Well done. Then what we want to do is assess how does it feel in each direction. So when we go to the back, is there any pulling or restriction or going to the front end restriction in either direction? A little bit. Yeah. So if there's a little bit of extension, it may be a pain, it may be a restriction in movement, it may just feel a little uncoordinated. A lot of people would push into that direction, but we find it's best to go the opposite direction and use the opposite movement to fix it. So if we're feeling a little restriction going into extension, Kat's okay, just going to go into a little flexion, pause, and then do a side to side movement. So she's hitching up one side, lengthening the other, and then the opposite, keeping that tucked feeling. So we're keeping a tuck, gently oscillating side to side. She's just going to do about 10 like that, really focusing on a deep rotation in the pelvis. The reason why this works is for many different reasons. If the joint is getting jammed when we're closing it, this movement opens the joint and then oscillates it side to side. That helps mechanically loosen the joint, but it also helps your brain learn that movement of this area is not painful. If you've had pain for a long period of time, sometimes it gets a little pre-scared and so it'll start to contract before you even go into that range. It's really nice to help unstick some old habits. So once we've done 10 side to side, Kat goes back to the center and then try going into a little extension again. And how does that feel now? Yeah. And you'll often find, often people are quite surprised how nice it feels. Once we've cleared that, then she can do 10 forward and back just to really reassure the brain that going forward and back feels nice, feels good. We're making sure that we've got very little gripping through the front or the back. Also, while you're there, have a little check with your fingers to make sure you're not squeezing your glutes. So have a little bit of a tap through there and then also through the front of the hips to make sure that you're not gripping with those superficial hip flexors. A lot of dancers, physios, Pilates instructors and yoga teachers tend to use too much muscle to do very small movements. So I want you to try and use as little muscle as possible. So that's number one is forward and back. Number two is side to side. So back in neutral, we're going to hitch the right hip up towards the right rib cage, lengthen the left, and then hitch the left and lengthen the right. Now, does that feel any different side to side? A little tight going to the right. Yeah, a little tight hitching up the right. So then what we want to do is use the opposite direction and the opposite movement. So she'll lengthen the right side instead of squashing it. 
then do 10 tiny tucks and tilts in that side bend. Now take it nice and slow, and again using as little muscular effort as possible. I like to say, imagine the bones are moving themselves, or you're moving from your ovaries, if you do have them, or from your kind of internal organs. Of course you are using some muscles, but we want as little gripping on the outside as possible. Beautiful. And then go back, centre, retry that right side flexion. Now is that fair? Yeah. Yep. And then just do 10 side to side once that movement feels nice. Now you may find that it clears up straight away, my cat does. She's been doing this for a while and knows how to kind of ask those muscles to relax. If you do it once and it's say 70% better, then by all means go back, try the correction again. You want the pure movement to be pain free before you move on. So you may find that in the beginning you just do the forward and back movement, then after a little while you can move on to adding on the side to side. When you can do both of those quite comfortably, we add in rotation. So the rotation of the pelvis is going this way, and I like to feel like this hip is falling down into the ground, and then this one is raising. Try not to squeeze the butt on this side to kind of push it up. It's more of a falling down of this side, and rotate side to side. Now don't worry, a lot of people find this movement tricky in the beginning. It should be a natural part of walking, but a lot of us lock off our pelvis, especially if we've done a lot of core stability work in the past. So see if you can just rock gently side to side. It's quite nice if you can put your fingertips on those hip bones so that you can feel the movement, especially if your brain doesn't really have a good model of where your pelvis is in space. Try to keep the knees pointing reasonably up towards the ceiling rather than flopping off to each side as you do your movement. Does that feel even side to side or one side harder than the other? Yeah, it's pretty even. Yeah. So if it feels even, you can just gently rock from side to side. A lot of people feel a bit just uncoordinated, but it's even side to side. Just practice that. If you find that you can rotate one way and then not the other, then you can do the same principle as before. You go into the good side and then do a little bit of a tuck and a tilt. If it's feeling nice, then you can just do the simple version. Once you can do all of those movements, then we want to integrate this into a figure eight, or as one of my very precocious nine-year-olds told me, I suppose that it's an infinity sign. So it's going this way, yeah, and so it's a little bit of a lazy eight. I'll just usually um, take somebody's pelvis and guide them through, because it's a little hard to get your brain around. So if we think of the pressure on the floor, you're going to roll up for center, then go over to the right, down the outside of the right foot, underneath the right foot, up for center. Excellent. And then up over to the left. That's it. Down and around. Good. Up the centre. Over and around and down. So we go into that rotation. And then up the centre and over, around and down. Beautiful. Just do a couple more of those yourself. Beautiful. And once you've mastered that direction, you can try going in reverse. So rolling down the tailbone under, up and around, and down, up and around. Beautiful. Now this is a great exercise to do before any Pilates class, yoga class, dance class, workout, martial arts training, anything like that, because it'll help wake up all of those tiny deep stabilizing muscles. Usually it feels quite nice straight away, but you'll often notice that you start to get more articulation of your pelvis. When people first start doing this, they often find they have to concentrate a lot. That's a really good thing because you're building out new areas of your brain and teaching much more subtle movements through the pelvis. This is especially important for any dancers who want to hold their legs on there. Really good place to start if you're trying to get those legs a little bit higher. So if you're having any issues with this, please feel free to contact us at the clinic. You should not experience any pain with doing this exercise, so if you do, let us know. But um, hope you enjoy playing with that. Let us know how you go.